maintain our focus and determination with a sense of humor, born of the knowledge that we are mortal men and women, and to fuel our work with vigor, stamina, and a hearty spirit. For all of this, we give our thanks. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, if I could take one more second. Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor. I was handed a, uh, a news clipping here, uh, Charles Gallagher. I don't know if anybody knows him out there. Charles Gallagher, I know several right. people should because the man designed the city seal right behind us, right up here. He just passed away in uh, November of uh, 2013. He was a police officer for 40 years, serving three years in New Hampshire and 37 in the city of Madeira Beach. He retired as the chief of police. He designed our original seal in the city of Madeira Beach, so he will be missed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, and uh, please everyone keep uh, Mr. Gallagher and his family in uh, our thoughts and prayers. Thank you again, Mr. Vice Mayor. Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Here. Commissioner Hodges? Here. Commissioner Poe? Here. Commissioner Schantz? Here. Mayor Palladino? Here. At this time, I will entertain a motion for approval of the provided minutes. I so move, Mr. Chairman. I second. Motions are made and second. Any discussion amongst the commission? Any corrections? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Uh, before I entertain a motion to approve the agenda, I would ask to amend the agenda to read uh, presentations first, second, moving uh, reports to second, and then uh, F being third, public comment. And at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the agenda. A second. A motions are made and second. Any discussion amongst the commission? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. All right. First up, presentations by the GFOA of a Certificate of Achievement and Excellence in Financial Reporting to Finance Director Vincent M. Canalio. And this evening, uh, the presentation will be made by Karen Keith. If you would please come up to the podium. And at this time, could I please ask the commission to join me at the podium? Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Karen Keith. I'm an accounting supervisor at the City of Tampa, and I represent the, both the national level GFOA as a CAFR reviewer, and I'm also a budget award reviewer. And I represent the Florida Government Finance Officer Association level as a board member on the Hillsborough County chapter. And um, the CAFR award is one that promotes excellence in financial reporting. It also it has strict <coughs> adherence to general accepted accounting principles and standards, and it has transparency to the citizens and stakeholders. And about 3,900 entities compete for this award, and it's really an achievement when you win this award. So with that, it is a great honor and privilege that I present this award to Vince Tenalia, the Finance Director of the City of Madeira Beach. Ladies and gentlemen, I just Besides this, uh, getting a chance to work with our finance director on our bonds here for the City Hall project, this is one hard-working young man, and I'll tell you what, the City of Madeira Beach should be proud to have him. Vince, thank you. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. Right. Honor.
Vince, once again, thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. I promise it wasn't just my work, but I appreciate it very much. Thanks. Next, we'll be moving on to uh, reports, um, correspondence and reports. And uh, I've got a few little things to start out with. Um, from the TDC, I'm the TDC board member of the elected officials for Pinellas County, and it's good to report. Uh, the numbers are up, incomes up, coming from tourism. Madeira Beach is definitely seeing its part of tourism dollars here in our city, which we'll see from the uh, city, manager, city manager's report coming up. Uh, also, I was uh, notified today and got a little bit of good news, and I think uh, past Mayor Shantz, Madam Mayor Shantz, uh, can tell what an honor this is to be, but I found out today that uh, I was nominated to be the Vice President of the Mayor's Council of Pinellas County. Guys, we are getting it done in this city. I mean, we are being recognized, and it will be the first time that a mayor of this city will sit as a Vice President or President of the Mayor's Council for Pinellas County. And uh, does anyone else have anything they'd like to say, correspondence? I'd like to give everybody an update. Actually, I'm going to make Deputy Lucky give the update. We've been making quite a bit of progress with our derelict and at-risk vote programs, and we're finally getting some great contacts at FWC, and Mr. Lucky can really fill you in on everything that's going on. He doesn't let me go out with him. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll shoot somebody. Now, now, Commissioner, you told me you weren't going to go out when I was 40. <laughs> Say that again. No. I really, uh, I, I appreciate it, and I'll, I'll keep it short, but um, we have been making a lot of headway um, between FWC and some of the things that they're doing with programs. Our Marine unit has um, done a couple of things that's pretty neat. Um, they had a few new guys coming into the unit, and with some of the issues that I communicated from you, Commissioner, uh, they actually made this kind of a training area for those deputies, and as a result, we had a pretty significant increase in violations issued on derelict boats and reported to the state. Um, so that's good. Now, it doesn't instantly stop everything, but there's a lot of progress in identifying some of those boats and getting them towed out of here. Um, several citations were issued within the area by our marine units, and then I also hit with some of the marinas in town. Um, we're making a lot of headway there. Uh, Mr. Swanson, who's managing um, the ABC Marine over here, who we had some complaints about possible liveaboards. He's really running with the ball. He's actually going to pass out some of the flyers that were created by you to every single one of the boat owners um, so that they will be aware of the ordinances, what needs to be done, where the pumping stations are. Um, so that's, that's, I think, a great stride to get some awareness through that level. We've also, on the enforcement end, had the uh, pleasure of towing a couple of boats in the last month on, that were derelict and not uh, not anchored or at any of the marinas, just living in our waters out here in Madeira. And in one case, we even arrested one of the boaters um, that had one of these boats identified, and the marina, as a result, is uh, towing the boat out of there and evicted him from, uh, from Madeira Beach. He's gone <coughs> elsewhere now. Um, so we're definitely making some headway. I think one of the biggest things I'd like to say, and I know it's been happening, um, especially to everybody out here behind me. I'm sorry, I, I feel weird talking behind you. Um, phone calls from the community. The more information we get, the more we can act on stuff. I know a lot of times people don't want to uh, report things. They don't want to, they're afraid of retaliation. I promise you, and I'll say this to all the commissioners and the mayor up here, um, reporting is one of the biggest keys because it's how we know that the problem exists and we will continue it, but it's, uh, it's, it's going in big strides. Um, and I think uh, we're gonna go out at least two more times in the next week and try to identify and follow up on some of the boats that have already been tagged. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deputy. I have to say before Deputy Luckett leaves, our biggest break came when Deputy Luckett came here. I sat down with him, talked to him, told him what we needed. He didn't say, there's nothing I can do. He says, okay, let's do it. So thank you. Does any other commissioners have anything they would like to report? No. Um, Mr. City Attorney. No report for me tonight. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Mr. City Manager. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of quick items, and then we'll get into uh, uh, the report that everybody's list, uh, here to hear tonight, I think. Uh, first of all, if you remember dating back, oh, Lord, probably last May, maybe almost close to a year ago, we approved a bunch of uh, a variety of uh, festivals, if you will, events on Madeira Way. And uh, I was charged by the commission to meet with the uh, promoter. We had had one canceled, and there's some concern about the quality uh, of the events there. Uh, the mayor sat in with me on the meeting, and what I think we determined was fewer and far between and bigger scope is kind of what we're looking for. And so um, there were events scheduled in February, a home decor show, and in April, a garden art show that we effectively canceled. And that's been communicated to the people on Madeira Way. Um, there was one remaining event on March 15th and 16th. It was uh, coined as a Mad Beach pre-St. Uh, Paddy's Day Festival, and that will occur. And then we urged her to go ahead and put in the event applications for the following year. So we'll do about one a quarter. And uh, part of what Amy and I are revising, we're going to send it off to Attorney Trask tomorrow, is the ability for these promoters to put in their application with more than 90 days notice. A lot of times I think our marketing has been somewhat shoddy on these events and frankly they're not going to spend any money until they know they've got their application approved. So I'm, I'm okay uh, approving these. Uh, you know, there's going to be a resolution in front of you next month having staff do that. But I'm okay approving these things a, a year in advance. I wouldn't want to go any further than that. But that gives them some time uh, to fundraise, market, so on and so forth. So that was a very long-winded way of telling you the events in February and April are, are canceled. Um, the second thing Amy and I had discussed today, uh, City Clerk's video and I, is the March 11th date. We all know that that's election day. And I think what we should do at this moment in time is just say we're going to cancel the BOC meeting for that day. We would do that effectively no matter what. But to reschedule it I think is a little bit premature. I think you may see yourselves having a special meeting or two either in late January or in February for contract approvals and that type of thing. So let's just kind of see how it all plays out if the commission is okay with that. Um, thirdly, the new website, the new new website is up. Uh, people from net, uh, network people are here tonight. Um, our first version was okay, but I just wasn't satisfied with it. I worked with them over the weekend, and we launched a brand new website, and it's it's something special. It's something you can be proud of. Uh, take a look at it. Make sure it's functional. Make sure you're getting your email. Make sure all the things are on there that you want. And it's it's a, a, a fluid type thing. It's got it's going to improve on a daily basis. But I think the flash and the glamour that we were looking for is depicted in this one much better than the one of a week or two ago. So I apologize for anybody in the public that wanted to get on and it was down for quite some time but it's up and running and it's, it's something special. So with that, um, tonight uh, Vince and I wanted to uh, present to you a very short financial report and the reason for that is there's a lot of misnomers going around because of so much money being spent and a lot of money is being spent here in Madeira Beach. A lot of projects are underway. And so the argument is, well, where's the money coming from? And, and how do we sit financially? And so Vince and I spent some time in the last couple of weeks putting together a, a report on how we ended last year, at least so you've got that part. If Vince is in the middle of a, an audit and, and we thought it was a good time to update you. And so what I'd ask is let Vince take five minutes and walk you through the report. And then we can take question and answers from you guys and, and, and go from there if that's all right. So with that, Vince, I'll hand it off to you. All right. I may take more than five minutes, <laughs> but I will I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, I did go back and forth a few times today trying to figure out how much level of detail I wanted to provide. But I think at the end of the day, no matter how I communicate it, um, most of the content I have to to present is very positive. So I did give the City Commission the December financial statements last week. Um, that first quarter update was a little bit more detailed than my typical monthly reports because it did include actual revenue and expenditures from fiscal year 2013. So in the memo, there's a section that includes what basically amounts to an update to the budget. Um, listed under the fourth bullet point, it breaks out basically the difference between what was budgeted in each fund in terms of available cash balance versus how we actually ended up at year end. And what you'll see is that the result overall was very positive. 
um, significantly positive. Um, so I thought I'd try to break that down into at least a little bit more detail tonight. And um, you know, once I get through it, we can open up to questions or whatever you want to do. Um, first off, the best place to start, I suppose, is at the beginning. So general fund beginning balance. Um, this is basically where everything starts. The number that you'll see in the report is $5.4 million, um, listed as beginning cash balance for fiscal year 2013, $5.4 million. A lot of questions, I think, arise around that number because if you look in the CAFR, uh, unassigned balance in the general fund is more like $7.2 million. So, you know, sometimes it's an e easy question, where's all the money if you're saying you have $7.2 million available, why is that not shown here? And the difference is because the city reserves a third of its budget for emergencies and hurricanes, uh, or natural disasters of any kind, whatever that may be. That amounts to about $1.8 million. So what we're showing is a cash projection basically doesn't even factor in that extra $1.8 million. That's just considered unavailable, not available for appropriation. The city would have to come to the commission for specific approval to use that money. So keep that in mind that everything we're showing here and projecting here is on top of that emergency reserve. Second, in the general fund, um, this is really positive, especially because I'm, I'm certain that if you surveyed other cities in the community, um, other cities in the state, and really countrywide, uh, over the past four or five years, a lot of communities are using reserves to balance their general fund budget. Uh, not only did we not do that, despite all the different budget amendments we passed last year, um, operating revenues actually exceeded operating expenditures in the general fund. And we could kind of get into a couple details to to identify what that number actually is. And if you, you know, if you look at it one way, you may say it's just a hair uh, that we made it. And if you look at it another way, you may say it's closer to $150,000. And a lot of that has to do with the way that we organize some of, our some of our enterprise funds, like the Johns Pass Fund, which was kind of arbitrary in the budget, the way we segregated that in the past. Um, we have a transfer in of $75,000, for example. There's really not much of a difference between that and operating revenue. So if you want to consider that operating revenue, you could say that the general fund revenues exceeded expenditures by closer to $120,000, which is uh, the city commission should be commended for that because that's uh, it's very significant. And finally, in the general fund, my only other the only other thing I wanted to hit on was available cash balance. And again, if you look at that report, it's the it's the row midway down the page in bold, and underneath it you'll see the, percent, the percentage available balance as percent of operating budget. I think it's pretty clear, you know, the city is not trying to hide the fact that we are drawing down cash balance. That's, that's not a secret, but it's very important to keep in mind that we're not doing that in the context of the operating budget. Quite the opposite. You know, the operating budget for this past year returned, like I said, closer to $120,000. We are drawing it down to finance some of these capital projects. I mean, we have a laundry list of capital projects in fiscal year 14. And all of those, with the exception of City Hall, are, are pay-as-you-go cash funded. So even despite all that, despite the fact that we're, we're supporting all these projects with cash, when you look out to fiscal year 2018, you see that percentage, 24%. $1.3 million in available cash balance. I have to say, you know, I, I get uh, beat up for being conservative, but I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty comfortable with that number. Um, a lot of communities have a specific policy for, for what they want that number to look like. Uh, maybe, maybe 5%, and maybe 15%, 25%. Every city is different. Every city has their own unique characteristics, but 25% available cash balance as a percent of the operating budget in five years, considering all the projects we're talking about, is, is pretty healthy. So, um, you know, it's ultimately the city commission's decision as to what, you know, where we should be in terms of, of fund balance, but at the moment we look pretty good. Next I wanted to look at the local option sales tax fund, which may refer to as the penny for Pinellas. 
first point that, um, if it isn't obvious, should be, is that this fund does not have any operating expenditures in it at all. No personnel expenditures, no recurring expenditures of any kind. So because of that, uh, and well, part of that, excuse me, the entire reason for that is because there's restrictions on how this entire fund can be used. It can only be used to support capital projects. So with that in mind, <coughs> when you see available cash balance in this fund, reducing, it, we're reducing cash balance in this fund quite a bit, especially in the next couple of years. But I guess my point here is that that's really not that big of a deal, uh, considering that we're not funding any recurring operating expenditures. It's basically just, um, it's almost a timing fund. You know, as the, as the funding comes in from Penny for Pinellas, those funds are available for capital expenditures, and whether we want to spend the entire amount in one year or hold on to it for a couple of years and make a bigger expenditure in a few years, that's, that's the city's policy, that's the city's decision. So I wouldn't want, I guess I would say the $91,000 cash balance you see in 2016, for example, probably shouldn't be cause for too much concern. Um, that $91,000 is available for capital projects, and it's perfectly fine sitting there and just building for future capital projects down the line. In terms of revenues for that fund, fiscal year 13 revenue was $360,000, which is also, I mean, it's great news. It's, that means that revenue is back to pre-recession levels. That's the, the highest that has been in five years. Um, so our, our projection for fiscal year 14 was $367,000, it's $371,000 there, but that includes a little bit of interest. Um, in any case, budget for 2014 looks pretty good. I mean, we're back to, to where we were four or five years ago in that fund, so um, that, that's another fund that looks very healthy. Sanitation fund is next. We'll skip over the Archibald fund for right now. <coughs> I mean, that's, that's another fund that, quite frankly, looks very healthy. Operating revenues, exceeded operating expenditures in 2013 by $250,000. Um, that was enough to cover the entire cost of a sanitation truck. So, so basically we're saying in the sanitation fund, not only are revenues covering recurring costs, they're also covering uh, costs to support ongoing capital. Um, available cash balance in that fund is between $900,000 and a million dollars for each of the next five years. So. Uh, that's probably our healthiest fund at this point. There's, there's really no issues to identify there. If you could turn to the stormwater fund next. That's a fund that uh, is probably, you know, that pro fund probably deserves uh, more attention than any others at this point right now, given the list of capital projects we're talking about. You'll see that available cash balance over the course of the next five years is drawn down to $32,000 in 2018. Um, that's, pro that's probably a little lower than, than we would prefer, but the reason for that, just like we talked about with some of these other funds, is not because of the operating budget. In fact, quite the opposite. The operating budget returned $60,000 this year. So it's, it's just like everything else. We, we're talking about major capital improvements that for the time being we're planning to, f to finance with cash. $1.2 million to be specific in cash out of this fund over the next two years. So uh, accordingly, available cash balance is going to go down. I can tell you that we're currently working with consultants uh, and identifying what our, our true capital needs are for some of those stormwater projects, and we'll tie that into a rate study, um, and we'll do what we can to be sure that we're protecting that, uh, that cash balance. But bottom line with stormwater fund is that the ongoing day-to-day -day recurring budget looks good, returning $60,000 last year. Um, and, and what you see as being drawn down is only for capital, just like the other funds we talked about. And the Marina Fund is next. The Marina Fund is another, I mean, it's another one that looks, it looks great, quite frankly. The Marina Fund operating revenues exceeded operating expenditures last year by $130,000. So. Uh, Dave gets all the credit for that. That was the marina's best year, um, best year since 2007, second best year since 2004. So um, they did great. And you know something to consider there is that 
right now we've got the general fund penciled in for $300,000 in marina improvements. I think we have it scheduled for 2017. You know, that's something that could certainly be brought into the marina fund and would, would probably be more appropriate. Um, and if we were to do that, that's a $300,000 savings to the general fund. So uh, marina looks great. And then just a couple other items that aren't, aren't really in your, um, your projections exactly because they're, they're pertaining more to current year. Uh, the first is Archibald. That's, that's really the only fund at this point where, you know, we've got some, a little bit of, of concern, at least short term. And, and really the only reason for that is, uh, is because of the park being closed for the last couple months. But, uh, I mean, the good news there is that that's, that's a very short term situation. Uh, the, the awards that were recently approved for the concession agreements by the city commission are going to bring in an extra $60,000 on top of what was budgeted. So even if, you know, based on timing, even if this current budget, um, if we would end at a loss for whatever reason, once we get to October, that fund is going to, I mean, that fund is going to be in really good shape. So uh, compared to what we, what we planned on, we're going to be $60,000 better off in terms of uh, budget revenue. So. What you see in that report is, is potentially looking like an issue. Just keep in mind that that's, that's a short-term issue, if anything. And then finally, that brings us to parking revenue. I know you guys ask me about parking revenue all the time, and I'm always pretty shy about giving you a number. But um, for the first quarter, um, October through December of this year, compared to last year, the city experienced a 42% increase in parking revenue. Um, if we were just to annualize that number, and, and first off, let's remember that's with Archibald being closed. But uh, even taking that out of it, if we were just to annualize that number, we're talking about at least 300, 330,000 extra dollars this year. Um, and that's without taking into consideration another item on the agenda tonight, which is related to parking ticket processing, uh, which could save quite a bit of money. So parking looks good. And with that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, first of all, Vince, thank you very much, and I think you answered my question because that's the number I came up with was about 42% increase in parking this year. So, I mean, when I look at things like that, that's how we've been working to get tourists here. I mean, they, they definitely uh, put money in the meters to help us along. And, Dave, to you and your staff at the marina, outstanding, outstanding big turnaround there at the marina. Uh, any other commissioners have any questions? Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor? Yes. Just quickly, Vince, the, uh, the uh, penny for Pinellas, you know, and I know you're very conservative, but for the next four years, you got it exactly the same, you know, amount. Yep. And that's okay. I'm, I'm good with that because it's probably going to be better. But the interest that you're saying that we're getting on that, is that also locked into only beautification projects or, or certain types of projects, the interest? We can't throw that back into the general fund. Uh, we could do, quite frankly, we could do whatever you want to do there. The I mean, that's just a matter of how we pool the cash and allocate the interest. Um, if you tell me you'd rather see that interest uh, allocated out to the general fund, we could, I mean, we can make that happen. That's, uh, that's a policy decision that uh, is But our hands aren't tied by Pinellas County, is what I'm saying. No. Okay. No. Good enough. Fantastic job. I mean, really, the city is in good shape. And uh, parking revenue alone pays the debt service for, yeah. the, for the bond alone. There, there was one other item I wanted to mention I skipped over. Uh, building revenue is another hot topic. Um, building permit revenue totaled $226,000 last year. That was the first year that the city took on that service. Um, and in fact, when I was talking about, you know, how you really want to separate out general fund operating revenues versus expenses, the city can only use building revenue for uh, what we identify as our building costs. And any excess revenue has to be reserved. So we reserved $38,000 off of that revenue. It can only be used for future building expenses, which means that the revenue you saw in the general fund was really $38,000 less than it actually was because we have to consider that unavailable. But in other words, it's just a reflection that your general fund is even a little bit better than it looks. Vince, the uh, building department's fine. I mean, it's carrying itself. It's, it seems like there's a lot of activity in the city. Uh, yeah, Shane, I'm sure Shane can address that better. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, 
Frank, you want to stand up? Uh, everybody, this is our new Madeira Beach building uh, official and inspector. He started with us uh, a week and a half ago um, and uh, has made quite an impact already. Uh, I, you can tell definitely the difference between having somebody on the payroll and having a contracted company do it. And so uh, Frank is uh, quickly learning who all the players are in town and where we got all the, uh, the action going on. But uh, to touch on your point, Mr. Mayor, ab absolutely, it's certainly self efficient uh, even in excess because there are dollars uh, outside of what our expenditures are um, but it's, you, you see what's going on out there in the community those are some pretty sizable permits and some pretty sizable checks being written to Madeira Beach for that so um, it's a lot of work Lynn Rossetti's in the audience too and she puts a lot of time in and a lot of that development um, you know that uh, you know from a recruitment standpoint we've been pro development since we kind of opened the doors here again and and things are happening out there I, I hope people like what they see. Any other commissioner? No. Uh, once again, Mr. City Manager, to you, your staff. Uh, I mean, I look back uh, the years I've lived in the city, and I believe it was 2007, somewhere in there, uh, the millage rate of the city was 2.2 mills. We're at 1.79. We're still saving money, and we're getting a ton of things done to you and your staff. Outstanding job. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, the one thing, and, and Vince is, I, I give him grief because of his conservativeness, but I, I, I concur with the way that he, he puts this together and, and reports it to me. Remember the barrage of budget amendments <coughs> we had this last year? I mean, there were a lot of things. We're reinventing city government and kind of feeling things out as we come along. All those budget amendments and still returned six figures to the general fund, that's that's impressive. And that's uh, that's you guys. You guys are the one improving that. And so you're, you're fiscally responsible, and that's that's no joke. So congratulations. That's teamwork, Mr. Crawford, all of us. And uh, Vince, actually, just one last question, uh, going back to parking. The average parking revenue has always been kind of $700,000 a year. So what you're saying is we'll be somewhere over $1 million with that now if we keep on the trend we're at right now? Yeah, actually, uh, the numbers are a little bit higher even. Okay, so well, I'm, being, I'm probably a little more conservative than you. 2013 uh, parking revenue, $796,000. And if we were to, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but if the, if the past three months are any indication, then uh, current year revenue would be closer to $1.1 million. And the residents of this city park for free. Correct. All right. Is there any questions? Does anybody in the audience have a question? Oh, okay. We'll move on to uh, public comment. Public comment. This section is reserved for public comments on matters or concerns pertaining to city business and which are not on the agenda. Public comment is limited to three minutes. Would anybody like to speak this evening? Victor? Carlos here, and uh, Mr. Tenagli, I have a question for you about the, the amount of the emergency fund today that we have. It's 1.8 million. 1.8. You say that it's not used for uh, managing the budget, and uh, my question is in um, when about the YouTube office. I think that the emergency fund was around close to $30 million. So if that was a, the amount, uh, where did the money go? I mean, we use it for something else. If we don't balance the budget, we still are using the money for it, for anything else, right? Um, for emergency. If it's okay to uh, respond. Uh, I, can, I can promise you that that number was never $13 million. It's always been, well, I can't say always, for the, recent past that emergency fund has always been one third of the general fund operating budget. Um, that operating budget, you know, tends to swing a little bit, but it's always, you know, $5 million and change. So uh, in general, I can tell you that number's probably always been between 1.5 and $2 million. Nowadays, but then it was much more than that. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, the number they have was $9 million, but there, there is always I uh, had sent letters to Mr. Crawford. Thank you for answering most of them. And I also sent you emails to you, which you still haven't answered. But the amount of money is um, sometimes very difficult to precise on mm -hmm. the emergency fund. So I understand that might be two or three million dollars difference, 
but it's a big difference with nowadays money, and the money has been used. It still is being used. Even if it was $5 million, today we are in a million dollars, um, and we don't use it for to balance the budget, that's okay. But we are using the money. And my question is, what do we do with $1 million and the emergency fund if we have a national disaster, anything? Um, again, first I would just try to, try to clarify that we have not used the emergency fund. Um, that would require that would require a specific vote by the city commission. But somebody used it, right? The money is not there. Uh, that, as as best as I can tell you, that's that's not true. Um, well, it's somewhere. We, let me put it that way. I think that I suppose the confusion could be because um, if if you look at, for example, the city's cash balance report. I look at pa page one twenty four and balance and we end up from $5 million to 700 bucks, uh, 700,000. I think the correct, correct the page, Vince, 15. is 127, not 124. Um, well, if I, go, if I go to page 124, okay. I'm, I have to be honest, I'm just not, uh, not exactly sure where in the bottom line, uh, you have okay. You're talking yeah, okay. Yeah. Page 125. I, s I suppose this could be okay. what you're talking about. Um, there's a there's a specific note in the budget that says the city of Madeira Beach reserves one third of the general fund budget for unforeseen emergencies. Um, as far as I know, that's been the case for a while. This amount was previously reported as a designation of fund balance, but is now included in the unassigned balance of the general fund. That's uh, it's kind of an accounting change that was made at some point. I don't, I don't know when that change was made, but um, in any case, that doesn't refer to any, any spending. The next sentence says, for fiscal year 14, $1.7 million of the unassigned balance has been earmarked for unforeseen emergencies. These funds would be available for use with VOC approval following an event such as a flood or hurricane. Um, that, that remains to be the case. We, uh, I can just tell you, we haven't used the money, as far, uh, as, far as I know, in the recent past, anyway, the city ha has never used that money. Um, I think so what would be helpful is at what point in time was it the 13 million or the 7 million that you're, you cite? Because it, it hasn't been in the last four years. Well, it was around uh, when you took office, there was, to me, $9 million. I don't know what the numbers can be mixed up or something, but. That can be co I, I, I can correct what I said if I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I'd like to sit down with you because our whole yeah, operating, me too, but I explained to you, I've been extremely busy too. Understood. It, yeah. It's just you have to understand the whole operating budget is nearly half of the number that you're citing, and that number you're supposed to get. Well, my problem, my problem is seeing that the cash balance that we have disappears. But according to the uh, budget that I have, in, in by 2015, we are going to have as cash balance, $757,000. And that's not correct, Vince. Would you please, uh, me and you went over that the other day. Um, you got the budget sitting in front of you. Yeah, off offhand, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the $750,000 refers to, but I can tell you, you know, maybe this is, uh, this is where this is coming from. If you look at beginning cash balance on page 127 in the general fund, we do start with $9 million. Uh, basically, what this projection uh, is attempting to do is just basically start with a beginning balance, add in all of our funding sources, subtract out all of our expenses, and uh, you know provide an update as to, as to where we stand at year end. So, for 2014, the nine million dollars that you're probably referring to is projected to uh, to go down to two million dollars, but that's in large part due to the to the municipal complex project. Uh, well, I also want to point out that the projections are just that, projections. Absolutely, we never absolutely. We only guarantee that I have on, from the budget is the expenditure. That, those are firm. They never change. If the, anything, they increase. If we look at any of the funds, we see that the expenditures keep growing. In the Marina Fund, we invest $1.5 million and we make $19,000 profit. I mean, what kind of uh, uh, relation is that on, on 
on, on the budget. You know, you can say it because it's there. It might be $30,000 or $40,000 the profit. But if we invest one and a half million dollars outside the city, we will be making, and you know very well, with one million and a half dollars, I'll be making 18% a year, at least. And you know the gasoline on the, on the marina makes that money only. But then we pay the personnel and disappear. That is the problem with anything that the government is running. You understand that? I mean, Victor, you're a, excuse you're me, a, Victor, a, a Victor, person, Victor, you, right? excuse me, Victor, we know it. Victor, mm -hmm. excuse me, sir, you've kind of gone over three minutes. Okay. The city manager and the finance director I, said I they'd gladly sit with you, time. sir, Thank and you. Uh, we'll be having the debate, I sir. I speak with Mr. Crawford in the Thank future. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Can you please state your full name and give your address? Thank you. Super Tolliver, 814 Bay Point Drive. Uh, I just have a question of what the definition of derelict boats is. Is that if somebody's living on them and dumping stuff, or can it include those boats that they've pulled out of the graveyard and parked all over across from our houses on Bay Point, which continually fall apart and float over to my house, and I have to pick up the parts and take them out? And if I, <laughs> I'm, frankly, I'm tired of taking them out. I just want to know if that's what. What is a derelict boat? And your little thing's not running. No. <laughs> Basically, a derelict boat is defined as a boat that cannot move on its own. Well, there are a bunch of them. They're, that's exactly what we were discussing earlier. That's is that what is what we're that what we're trying to get rid of? Oh, yes, good. That was yes. just that was yes. my <laughs> question. Thank you. I'm working on it, Virginia. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Closing. Public comment. <coughs> Next, at this time, I will entertain a motion for a consent agenda for items one through five. I so move, Mr. Mayor. Second. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded. Is there any comment from the commission? You forgot six or seven. It's a different hmm. motion because it's a four fifths vote. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Mr. Kocheck. Mr. Kocheck. Steve Kocheck, 15301 Second Street East, Madeira Beach. Uh, on the consent agenda, you have the special event for the Gulf Beaches Public Library, Food for Thought, which will be on April 5th, uh, 2014, from 6 to 9. Uh, we're hoping to have it at the recreation field. I'm keeping in close contact with Shane that in the event anything changes where the recreation area is not available, that we get notified as quickly as possible so we can change the place where we're going to be at. The tickets are $20 a piece now, $30 at the door if you come. It's always been a large uh, uh, asset for the library. The money. Uh, has been put to good use as far as some upgrades and up uh, uh, necessary equipment. And what that boils down to is keeping the price for the library to the five cities as low as possible. So uh, I just wanted to step up and, and let you know out loud what's going on. And if anybody hears anything, I know Shane will let us know. But uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, to next Monday we'll be having a meeting. We had our first meeting on dealing with it as far as going to the restaurants. We're getting a tremendous uh, positive uh, feedback from the restaurants. They think it's a great idea. They love it. And once they hear that all the funds go towards the library, uh, that, that kind of nails it right down. Uh, so I'd like to thank all the businesses and all also that are uh, participating. Uh, next month, we'll at our Monday at our meeting, we'll have more of an update. And then next month, uh, can come back to you with an update on that. And the second thing is the PPLC. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware or not, but there's been a radical change in the leadership on the PPLC. Uh, the city managers of Clearwater and Largo and somebody else has taken over. They got rid of the person who was there, Mary Brown, I think her name was. I'm not sure. Anyways, they, they uh, let her go. She, well, she resigned. And uh, what I've been doing now is I go to those meetings 
to make, ensure that uh, the Philp Beach's public library uh, continues to thrive amongst the community with the rest of the libraries. I get very shaky when three big cities decide they're going to take over something and start to run it. Not that they wouldn't look out for our best interests, but I doubt they would. And uh, I just would like to report to you, especially with you being on the Mayor's Council now, that uh, you let them know that someone is going to those meetings and keeping an eye out of what's going on. Hopefully it will be for the best of us all. I hope that one day I can look back and, and say, I apologize, I was dead wrong. But I doubt I'm very rarely wrong. So, <laughs> But just to let you know, in, in, all, uh, in all seriousness, that uh, it is something very serious to have something like that happen without any reason of why it happened or anything. And uh, just hopefully that it is for organizational and for the best interest of the uh, libraries as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kochak. And I take it we need to see you to go ahead and buy our tickets, correct? Yes. Thank you, sir. Is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next, at this time, I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda items six and seven. I so move. Second. Motion's been made and second. Is there any discussion amongst the commission? Is there any further discussion? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next H, unfinished business, ordinance number 2013-08. Mr. City Attorney, Attorney, please read by title only. 08. I have ordinance 2013-11. Oh, my bad. Is that correct? Sorry. Okay. Um, this is the second reading of ordinance 2013-11 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, creating section 102-56 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida to provide temporary sign exemptions for certain signs and providing for an effective date. That was the second reading of ordinance number 2013-11 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to uh, pass ordinance number 2013-11. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion amongst the commission? Is there any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, just for clarification's yes. sake, this was the uh, lightening up, if you would, of the uh, Madeira Beach sign ordinance. This allows for flutter signs and professionally created A-frame signs. So tell your business owners that this change after today is pretty much uh, uh, good to go. What we'll also do is send an update when the business tax license renewal season comes around so that they're aware that they can now use these signs after we impose the code on them that they couldn't. Uh, Mr. Kochek, you want to say something? Steve Kochek, 15301 2nd Street, East Madeira Beach. Uh, I know this had gone through once before, and I didn't have an opportunity to, uh, to see the first meeting on it, but uh, it's just a little odd that it's... Uh, how are you going to... How would the people know? Is it going to be like a bat signal that you can put out your signs? Or because this is one time where it's not actually written in stone. It is that labor statistics and this, that, and the other thing. In other words, a free for all until it gets out of hand, and then you'll rake it, pull it in. It's very odd the way it's written. I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen an ordinance written where it's what, what you know, who, who's you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Every six months, it's going to put out something. So what is it? Six months at a time, you say, okay, it's in now, it's out now. Uh, correct. I mean, you, you're kind of hitting it on the head. What we do, and this has been successful in Dunedin and a number of other cities, what they do, and, and Attorney Metz can comment on it further, they, they use unemployment as, as a, a statistical factor on whether or not they should allow a broader range of signage to be, to be used. And it, it was a, an easy way, frankly, to lighten up on the existing sign ordinance. And so we, we brought in just two types of signs that we thought should be allowed. Um, the commission then would review those statistics every six months and decide whether or not that they're going to allow for those um, in perpetuity or if, this, if the statistic allows for it. You are correct. It, in six, you could spend $500 on an A-frame sign, and in six months the, the unemployment rate changes and the Board of Commissioners says, well, we're not going to allow for that. But they 
can frankly change the sign ordinance at any time as well. Now it's free floating. Because if you remember history, I think one of the big reasons why this uh, the sandwich, sandwich board sign came in was that, which is almost always the time in Deer Beach, was John's Pass. If every store owner puts out a, a sandwich sign there, where did the people walk? You know, that's what it came down to in the last time. And I'm, you know, it's, it's, uh, I was just, when I read this, it, this was very strange. So I guess it's a test to see whether or not the business owners will shoot themselves in the foot or not with cluttering up the sidewalks. And then when the wind, big wind blows through and blows all the signs down and all, and they're out in the street and all, that'll be another thing to look at because we're on the beach. We're not in Dunedin. You know, sometimes maybe we're going to be Dunedin South, it looks like, because we seem to love Dunedin. I think, I think, Steve, for, or just for a second, Santi, I, I really believe that we as a commission felt that something we might do at a particular time to of our city manager to help our business people. We've had a lot of, of comments about we put out this sandwich sign, the little signs, and then they'd be right down there after. And I'm, I'm sure Shane's heard that over and over and over again. I have, and I know exactly what you're talking about sandwich signs and John's past. But the whole thing of it is to kind of help these people with the business when it's kind of slow and they're having a little bit of a problem, you know, with their business. And they feel like, I don't know, there's something about those little signs. I never got that when I was in business, but there's something about those little sandwich signs that they feel like helps. Well, and the, the signs are very specific in their yeah. structure. They can't just be a plastic, going to float away in the wind type sign. So yeah. we, we were aware of that. In fact, that was one of the major <coughs> reasons signs flying down Gulf Boulevard, so on and so forth. But the one complaint that we got most from the businesses is those A-frame sandwich signs. And it, the, John's Pass might be a little bit of a different animal because you can walk and you, you see those stores. But I always use Lisa's Cafe for a perfect example. I, I walk right by Lisa's unless there's a sign on the walk to come on in so uh, when we when we talked about this at, at length frankly at a, at a workshop we said was it worth giving it a whirl I guess is, uh, well, it's a, no I, I like I said you know it was just very strange the way it was worded and mm. that's why I thought I, I would be out at night looking for the bat signal that <laughs> the next day we're gonna have the signs <laughs> thank, you. thank you Mr. Kocek is there any further comment please see clerk please call the roll Vice Mayor Lister Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Um, new business, Mr. City Attorney, public hearing. Yes, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Items one and two under new business are public hearing. Uh, anybody in the audience or city staff that intends to provide testimony on either of those items, please stand up. If you could please raise your right hand. No, we're not speaking yet. I'm just going to swear you in. That's okay. Just raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You can sit down. Sir, did you want to be sworn in as well? Yes. Okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. You can both sit down. We'll, we'll go through the process. Uh, item number one is to consider alcoholic beverage use permit number 14.01 for Beach Fun and Games LLC located at 12975 Village Boulevard for a 2COP alcoholic beverage license to sell beer and wine for consumption on premises as part of the business. Uh, would city staff like to make a few comments on this application? Uh, I've reviewed it. Lynn Rossetti's in the audience if anyone has any questions, and I apologize. We should have maybe sworn her in, but at this time, staff has no rejection to the approval of the permit. Okay. Uh, does any of the commission have any questions for city staff regarding the application? Commission. Does it meet all the criteria? That's what I'm talking uh, Does the applicant have any questions for the city staff on its application? No? Okay. Hearing none. Could the applicant please step forward and discuss their application and answer any questions that the commission or city staff may have? Just provide your name and address. Thank you. Uh, Paul Sullivan, 310 16th Avenue, Indian Rocks Beach. Our business is 12975 Village Boulevard. 
we're coming up on the second anniversary of having our business open in John's Pass Village, and in surveying our customers, the number one thing that they asked us for is we could please have beer and wine. So listening to our customers, we have come to you to ask for the ability to sell beer and wine to our customers. Does the City Commission have any questions for the applicant? It is located upstairs, right? On the yes. yes. And, and you're going to put some kind of uh, coolers in for your, yes. for your beer? So you've got engineering drawings that are going to support that type of way. I want to be making sure you guys are all on the same page because we've granted several alcohol licenses in the past and you know people come and say we want to be a wine license and then it turns into something else as, a, as opposed to just selling the beer and wine to your customer you know it morphs into something else so I just want you to you know just be aware that there's not a lot that we can do if they meet the criteria you know that I mean correct we're, we're pretty right. much at the mercy of the state but just sell beer and wine and we're we're all happy Okay. <laughs> what is what is your business place? It's a it's a family uh, entertainment center. Oh, okay. And the ma the fathers and everybody like to have a beer while the kids are playing. That right? is correct. That's right. well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and the grandparents. Oh, sure. <laughs> Particularly the grandparents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's the 21st century, and we all drink beer, so that's right. But we don't <coughs> get excited, I guess. And wine seems to be very popular, also. So. Yes. That's the way it is. Any further questions? No. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, I'll turn it over for the uh, consideration of the commission. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to consider the alcoholic beverage use permit number 14.01 for Beach Fun and Games LLC located at 12975 Village Boulevard. I'll make the motion. Second. I'm not sure how to, but I'll make it. <laughs> I'll second. My motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion mm -hmm. amongst the commission? Is there any well, further? I would like to say that when we began this thing in John's Pass Village mm -hmm. several years ago, of the beer and wine license, <coughs> you know, I, I hated to see that in our village. But like I said, it's the 21st century, and everybody's drinking beer, me included. And everybody <laughs> drinks beer. Everybody likes a cold bud, right? And so... Especially grandparents. Yeah, especially grandparents. <laughs> but anyway, um, and we discussed this. I'm sure Terry remembers. We had a big discussion about this when we started this sort of thing. And I guess, really, basically, the Florida statutes, there's not too much we can do about it. I thought in this city at one time we had an ordinance, we need to look and see if we do, that you had to be 500 feet from anybody else that was selling alcohol. Now I remember when we opened the village landing, we had to measure from the bamboo to the front door of the village landing to be sure that it was 500 feet so we could apply for a, a license just like you're having, CCLP, for beer and wine. But um, I don't know if that is still around. I was going to research that, and I just forgot to take a look. See, I can look into it for you, Commissioner, if you if you remember correctly. And uh, but I think the Florida statutes come into that somehow. Well, they do, but you have some code that gives you some leverage. And if you remember the, uh, actually, we have two new commissioners. You probably don't. We had the the, the Gringos restaurant that was going to go in on 150th. Mm -hmm. And we thought that our hands were tied, and it didn't come down until the meeting where Tom and I were reviewing the code, frankly, that we found that there was a number of criteria you could use in regards to denial, and none of them are applicable, frankly, on either one of these applications, but where our public safety would be at risk was one of the issues, and if you remember beer trucks trying to get in and out of that restaurant and trying to get onto 150th mm -hmm. in a safe fashion was somewhat suspect. And so you had the ability to say, wait a minute, we don't think that this is a good spot for that. So your hands are somewhat tied. I think the vice mayor is correct. But 
there's a, a little, a couple of little nuances that you can um, use if you if you thought that the public safety was going to be hindered or threatened in any way. Um, the 500 foot setback, that one I don't remember, but um, I just noticed I don't have the right, I don't have an updated code book, I think. But I'll take a look at it on the computer uh, tomorrow and, and get it to you. But again, in this application, yeah, I mean they're down. Everybody, they're, how many's down there? I mean, we, I would. It's not to do anything to you, please. I was just discussing the idea that that ordinance does sail around in the city somewhere. It, 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 it could it have could. been withdrawn some years when I was, wasn't even in politics. I don't know. But it's, it's, it's not against you folks because there's beer and wine all around you. So <laughs> I would never I'm not vote for you to have it. How could you give to one and not to the other? That would be a quick way to get into trouble. <laughs> in this day and age, it's special. That's all I wanted to say. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Uh, is there any further discussion? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Paul? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Uh, Mr. C. Attorney, do we need to roll through public hearing for number two? Item number two is, uh, again, a public hearing. Is anyone here to uh, speak on item number two? Please stand up so I can swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Item number two is a public hearing to consider alcohol uh, beverage use permit number 14-04.02 for Florida Fisherman DBA Hubbard's Marina Incorporated located at 170 Johns Pass Place Boardwalk for a 2 APS alcoholic beverage license to sell beer and wine as part of their business. Would the city staff like to make a comment as to this application? Again, just like the last permit, uh, staff has uh, no problem with the um, DOC approval of this permit. Does the city commission have any questions for uh, the city staff regarding this application? Actually, I do for Captain Hubbard. Okay. Um, he's going to uh, do his presentation in just a second, so I'll, I'll hold off on those. Uh, does the applicant have any questions for city staff? Okay. Um, uh, would the applicant like to step forward and make their presentation and then answer a few questions from the commission? All right. Uh, we have three licenses currently on the boats to sell uh, beer and wine, and we have a charter boat, and we have a number of subcontract charter boats that we can't sell beer and wine to, and th our clients constantly jump from the party boats to the charter boats, and they're very confused why we cannot sell them beer. And I have closets full of beer for the party boats. So this, it's a league legality issue that uh, this license will allow us to sell the beer to our clients that are going out on the party boats, as well as the people that are buying bait and tackle and perhaps uh, going out on their own boats. We do have a, a fuel system that someday hopefully we'll be able to sell to the general public uh, fuel, gas, and diesel. But right now we're just using the diesel, the fuel system for our own consumption. Um, but this puts us one step towards a, a regular marina bait and tackle store. Uh, and that's basically what we want to use this license for, uh, to be able to service uh, clients that are going out on our charter boats. Thank you. Does the city staff have any questions for the applicant? No questions. Uh, does the city commission have any questions for the applicant? Uh, Captain Hubbard, one question for you. What are you thinking? Beer and fishing? Well, <laughs> here's the <laughs> question. All goes together. <laughs> You don't have to go out on the boat, Mark, to get, to get a beer. You can go in and, and grab a beer off the street, or, or and you have to consume uh, on premise, or? There'll be ca you know, ca cans of beer. Right. We don't sell bottles, uh, you know, that little beach out back, and then as well as the uh, uh, boats. We don't use, allow glass to go on the boats. So we'll just have canned beer and uh, some kind of little box wine or something like that, uh, along with sandwiches. We already have sodas in there and water, right. and we have a large variety of snacks. Um, it seems. In the middle of the day, we could use that store that was across the street, but apparently it's closed up now, too. So we have to send people all the way up to 7-Eleven when the, they forget their own snacks and their own uh, alcoholic beverages and all. You know, we have our own sodas we can sell legally, but just we can't sell them the beer. That's the challenge. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? No further questions. Um, thank you, applicant. Uh, does the, did the other applicant have anything to say? 
Okay, any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll turn it back over to the commission for their consideration. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to consider alcoholic beverages use permit number 14.02 for Florida Fisherman DBA Hubbard's Marina, incorporated located at 170 Johns Pass Place Boardwalk. I'll make the motion. I second. Uh, motion has been made and second. Any discussion amongst the commission? Is there any further discussion? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Paul? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next Mr. Mr. Mayor, before you proceed, I, I found it in code, and I found it because I saw Amy's look on her face when I said I didn't have a complete code book. I actually found it in another section. And it's, uh, Pat Schantz has got it right, kind of. Um, you shall not have this within 500 feet of an established church, synagogue, temple, place of religious worship, public or private school operated for the instruction of minors, or youth recreation center. So that might be where you were getting that, that no, no, part of it from. There also has got to be something about that. Um, but there's also, uh, if, you, if you read the whole code, it's relatively lengthy. It's section 110 um, in the 500s of your code. There's five um, uh, criteria um, based on the location, the extent that the proposed alcoholic beverage request would adversely affect the character of an existing neighborhood is an example of why you could, frankly, deny the, the, the zoning, frankly. Your hands are tied, but not to the nth degree. Thank, Thank you, Mr. State Manager. All right, next number three, resolution 2014-01. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. This is a reading of resolution 2014-01 by title only, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2014 budget by appropriating expenditures in the amount of $3,200 for City Manager's vacation hour payout and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution 2014-01 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that we pass resolution 2014-01. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion amongst the commission? Is there any further discussion? Would the state clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Paul? Yes. Commissioner Sean? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution, 2014-02. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. This is a reading of resolution number 2014-02 by title only, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2014 budget by appropriating expenditures in the amount of $3,810 for water quality sampling and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution 2014-02 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to um, pass resolution 2014-02. I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion amongst the commission? Yeah, I have a question about this water bill. Is, that, is this some new law or something that we have to do this? Uh, n not necessarily a law, although it's, it's, uh, that's kind of a play on words. There's something happening in our waters that's illegal. I, we can say that. And, and if it's not, we have a significant problem somewhere based off the results that we're getting. There are, we have pollutants in our water to the, to the gross factor, if you would, and uh, the county has asked us to continue doing water sampling through, I think it's maybe October. Um, we've, Dave and I and, and Vince have been working with the county to try to discover what this problem is, but the, the rates are somewhat alarming in some sections of our water areas, and so we're just trying to figure out what's, what's happening. The, it, boats dumping it may be part of the problem, but when you think, of, we've talked about this before, when you think of the sheer volume of water out there and the results that we're getting, I think there's a bigger issue, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so it's nothing the water that we use in our homes. It's the water in the bay. It's in, yeah, it's what you're it's boating in. Okay. Because, you know, we're continually in the mail, we're receiving, I don't know if any of the rest of the commission receives it, about uh, our water, how many to test our water. Mm -hmm. Those are all uh, political things. They're just uh, trying to get in your house with cellular water softener or something for pure water. That's what I figured. But, yeah. but I, when I saw this, I thought, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is re recreational water. Okay. Okay, that's my only comment and question. Thank you. But if it, you know, if, it cl if they close down Madeira Beach, it's a bad stain on us. I mean, it's it's hard to outlive that. So oh, yeah. we're trying to get in front of that with this water sampling to find out, making sure that it's safe enough before they just blindside you. 
They close down, you know, when they close down Gandhi beaches, everybody goes, oh, oh no, that's yeah. terrible. I'm never going to yeah. go back out there. It's, yeah. it, 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 it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a black eye. Yeah. And so we're trying to get in front of that to make sure that we have the faulty samples that says, no, you can't close Madeira Beach because these are the samples. And if it, if it deserves closing, I'm all for closing the beach. But I hate to be blindsided by yeah. the state or the county and say, you know, we're closing you for this reason and not have the, uh, you know, the paperwork to back it up. One of the other issue is the liability right now. You have four, Elaine Poe knows this uh, because of her work on the derelict boats. We have four, five, six different jurisdictions that own water in Madeira Beach, so everybody's going like this, and we have to find out who the culprit is. And so that it's important for us to do our due diligence and do these types of things. Oh, that's great. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Is there any further discussion? Would the C clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Pope? Yes. Commissioner Schantz? <coughs> Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next, uh, number five, resolution 2014-03. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. This is a reading of resolution number 2014-03 by title only, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2014 budget by appropriating expenditures in the amount of $12,500 for City Hall internship program and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution 2014-03 by title only. And before I entertain a motion, I want the city manager uh, mm -hmm. to just go ahead. I, I've seen the program in action, and it's outstanding, the young people that we have working here. It's uh, building future people, hopefully, to work for the city of Madeira Beach. And Mr. City Manager, if you'd like to comment. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate your comments, Mayor, and, and building, you know, these, these, these young kids up out of college is great, but we get one heck of a value out of them, too. They have to work approximately 400 hours for us for free before we ever even get into the payment part of it, and we're not obligated to hire them afterwards. If they've <coughs> proven their worth, then we, we, we try to set them up on a part-time basis so that they've got some working capital to, to find their next job. And so uh, we've, we've done two interns um, so far, and they've both been exquisite. They've, they've both done fabulous work. Um, it, they more, they, they help out in the city clerk's office a lot. They uh, shadow each of the departments. You know, they, they get their education in. But as, our, as I've continued to trim staff, you know, this, this is a great way to get some, some grunt hours, if you will, to, to take care of, you know, help assist with minutes and help set up the rooms and, and things of that sort. And the interns love it. Um, I think finding an internship these days is not the easiest thing to do. And uh, when you do a, a major such as mine, like poli sci or public administration, you have to have that to graduate. And so uh, we've, we've established a relationship with this professor, and he's been sending, frankly, the cream of the crop our way. So it's, it's really been a, a blessing, actually. And I know the city clerk has had a chance, and well, I see the yes nod, and, I, and I've seen uh, the, the assistant working with the city clerk, and she's an outstanding lady, very intelligent, and I know that's helped out the city clerk a lot. And, I've, and it shows by getting these minutes knocked out, so. But yeah, both of the interns we've had are very, very motivated, very, very, they'll do anything you ask. They're, it's, they're phenomenal. So, good. And with that, I will entertain a motion. I make a motion we pass resolution 2014-03. I have second. Motion has been made and second. Is there any discussion amongst the commission? It is money well spent. Uh, you can spend money in a lot of places that's wasteful. This is not one of them. It's, it's really a lot of bang for your buck, which I had to commend the city staff for this because Vince and, and, and everybody involved, you know, we're, we're, we're doing well with the money, and this is a good place to put $12,500. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd just like to make a comment, a history comment as usual. Is it going to be long? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, we had any dinner, right? I'm waiting for the <laughs> bats to break out. Come on. <laughs> no, it's not going to be long, but, it, you know, it's pretty doggone interesting when you talk about these internships. <laughs> no, you can't yeah. hear me? There you go. Years ago, um, we had a boy by the name of Paul Williams who came here as an intern. And as the years went by, I want you to know that Paul Williams became our city manager. He also was a, a, a very good employee. I, I think he run the public works in Gulfport before he came here. And uh, so it's a very valuable program, what they learn, how they help the people within City Hall. So just to let you know, this is just not our first rodeo at, with these kind of people. So, but it was a success and a great success, Paul. 
Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shaw. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I try to go as fast as I could. <laughs> All right, lady. Who gives the gavel? <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Would the uh, city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution 2014-04. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. This is a reading of resolution 2014-04 by title only, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2014 budget by appropriating expenditures in the amount of $17,136 for street sweeping expenditures incurred from January 2010 to June 2011 and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution 2014-04 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I so move, Mr. Mayor. I second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion amongst the commission? Is there any further discussion? I oh, I'm sorry. I see some confused looks up there, no. probably because of the dates. Yeah, question. <laughs> the dates. 2010 to fell through the cracks. <coughs> 2010 to 2011. Yeah. I mean, we wasn't paying our bill. Basically, <laughs> um, you have got to be kidding. Well, it, 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 think of that time period, and there, there was there was turmoil and, and chaos. And, and what happened was you were contracted with the city of St. Pete to do your street sweeping. The bills were coming in, but Vince and I have validated every single one of them, but it's proven that they weren't paid for one reason or another. No, no, not casting any stones. So the money is due. Since then, we've made a change. We're getting twice as much street sweeping done for about the same dollar amount, even saved a couple of bucks on it. So we no longer do business with them. Uh, we didn't even find this. They, they, had, they have signed on with one of those companies that goes through your old bills and your old accounting and says, hey, wait a minute, Madeira Beach owes you 18 grand. They never paid you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they dropped all their late fees, the interest, and all that. This is just labor that was, that was frankly performed in your town. But just something, you know, like I said, if you consider what was going on, I, I'm surprised there aren't more, to be honest yeah. with you. But it is what it is. I just thought maybe that was a misprint. No, I'm those dates are correct, ma'am. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Schott? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution, 2014-05. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. This is a reading of resolution two th number 2014-05 by title only, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2014 budget by appropriating expenditures for the municipal complex construction project and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution number 2014-05 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we pass resolution 2014-05. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion amongst the commission? Is there any further discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Vice Mayor Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. And before I proceed to close, I would just like to once again congratulate uh, Vince. Outstanding job. Thanks again. I, I appreciate the presentation and everything. <laughs> and I would like to thank the, the ladies and the gentlemen that showed up this evening to share this with uh, our finance director once again. But an outstanding young man, uh, Mr. City Manager, your, your hiring on our staff here in the city has, uh, you can look in the streets and see what's happening because of what you've done. And you. my congratulations to the commission also on their <coughs> hire. And congratulations to you. Thank you. Mayor, for before uh, oh. mayor and city clerk, if we could come on over here, we have a bunch of contracts to sign before everybody scoots off. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close first. Correct. Do you know further business? This meeting is adjourned at 721.